Hi YouTube, so it is Elizabeth back again with another video. This is a very highly requested video, probably my most requested video that's not directly like medically related, and this is going to be 10 things that your labor nurse wants you to have in your hospital bag, and I have uh, packed up a little hospital bag, so oops, I'm just going to go ahead and get started. Um, if you hear some noise outside, I want to apologize. We're getting some trees cut down, but you know, this is when I can film, so it is what it is. If the audio is like total crap, then I will just not post this video. So there we go. The very first thing that I want you to have in your hospital bag is something that makes you feel at home. So for some people, they need their own pillow to sleep or if they have sleep apnea obviously like their CPAP machine. So I've had couples before bring some fancy toilet paper so something small don't bring the whole kitchen sink but if you have something that kind of makes you feel at home that's perfect. Now I will say if you decide to bring your own pillow you want to make sure that your pillowcase isn't white because hospital sheets are white you don't want your pillow to get mixed up. If you have a lake 90s Esmeralda flannel pillowcase from your childhood, you could bring that and this labor nurse would love that because this is like my favorite Disney movie. So dark and the music is so good. I digress, but yes, so like a non-white, does not need to be Disney charactered um, pillowcase on your pillow that you bring from home is gonna definitely be pretty important so that your pillows don't get mixed up because in labor and postpartum pillows are used for a whole bunch of things from positioning you to positioning baby with breastfeeding and you just don't want to make sure that your like nice really comfortable pillow gets mixed up and gets left at the hospital so something from home that makes you feel comfortable that makes you feel relaxed for some people it's a blanket uh, or a pillow so those can definitely be helpful in kind of making you feel calmer and hopefully aiding in your rest after you've had the baby another thing what I love when my patients bring is snacks. So high protein um, powerhouse snacks are going to be perfect for those middle of the night munchies that you have when you're breastfeeding. Some larger hospitals might have a cafeteria that's open all the time. At my hospital, the cafeteria closes at like 7 or 8 p.m. and then on the weekends it actually closes at 2 p.m. Um, obviously there are lots of places around that will deliver now that we've got like DoorDash and Jimmy John's, things like that, but it's nice to have options if you deliver in the middle of the night for food to eat, something to eat if you come in an early labor, and then just something for postpartum. Most places also have snack rooms, but for being in a hospital, I am surprised by how unhealthy the snacks are. Now I will tell you nothing tastes better than a Pop-Tart at 2 in the morning when you're cluster feeding, but if you want something with a little bit more protein and a little bit more bang for your buck some protein bars or i just love laura bars in general and some nuts are a great option something that is not needed to be refrigerated is definitely ideal because not all hospitals are going to have access for patients to have a refrigerator in their own room that they can snore store their snacks in and the refrigerators that are available for all patients um, are not allowed to have individual snacks stored in that aren't provided by the hospital. Moving on to the official hospital bag. Now you can see this bag is not huge. Um, you do not need a ton of stuff when you go to the hospital. Which, And when you're coming in, you don't want to look like you're moving in. I mean, you can if you want. This is just all suggestions and recommendations. You do you, but this is kind of what I would have in my own personal hospital bag too. So outside pocket or somewhere that's easy to reach, I like to have what I call like my labor go-to grab bag. And so that's things that you would need in labor that you would need your support person or maybe a nurse to grab for you. So you want it to be all separated together, easy, easily accessible, and maybe in a pouch that you can like very easily describe, like the pink pouch in this instance. So in mine, I have deodorant. hair ties, chapstick, a contacts case with the solution already in it so I can just pop my contacts out, an extra contact, and what I don't have in here but I would recommend having if you're somebody who wears makeup is a makeup remover wipe because after the baby's born it's really nice to get that extra mascara out from under your eyes so when you're taking pictures you don't look like a raccoon. Not that it really matters but it is nice to have pictures where you don't look like a raccoon. From personal experience, I will insert a picture of me right after I had my first daughter. I looked like a raccoon. A very cute, happy raccoon, though. So, 
you've got that grab bag and that's really for labor and that's gonna be so helpful to have you're gonna want to put your hair up maybe you're gonna need some chapstick maybe you be stinky and we don't care if you're stinky, but I know like you always feel better if you're not stinky. Um, gum is another really great thing to have in that grab bag. I just don't have any on hand right now. Um, a toothbrush and toothpaste if that's something that you would like to do during labor. But just things that somebody who is not you and did not pack this bag could very easily go in and grab and give you that is going to be really helpful. So then getting into the actual bag, let me see what I want to start with. So. Let's start with electronics. Uh, obviously, everybody's going to have their cell phone, and I don't personally recommend bringing an additional camera unless you are like somebody who takes pictures, is a photographer, just because I feel like they're bulky, they mostly don't get used, and our cell phone cameras are so good now that people are great at taking like really beautiful cell phone pictures. But to go along with your cell phone, what's really nice is to have a very long cord. So this is a super long, like 10 foot long iPhone, iPhone cord very very long as you can see and what's nice about this is that it can be plugged in and then you can have your phone charging when you're in the bed um, so that you have access to a charged phone um, and this is gonna be nice for after you have the baby too breastfeeding in the middle of the night all sorts of things you have a nice long iPhone charger to have your phone charged I also personally um, recommend bringing headphones I, after I had my son, I had him in the middle of the night and I had so much adrenaline and just like those post labor hormones going that I just like was unable to sleep. So everybody else was asleep and I was able to listen to a podcast and not disturb anybody else. So headphones are a really nice thing to have. If you are going for an induction and you might be there for a long time, sometimes like an iPad or a laptop if you're somebody who wants to watch Netflix can be useful. But I kind of just use my phone for all of those things. So just having the necessities to be able to charge my phone and have that ready to go and a nice long iPhone charger is really nice. So in labor, a lot of women come in wearing nursing bras, which I think is wonderful. But one thing that is super annoying, um, either you know, right after labor, when you're getting your epidural, when we're trying to like get access to that area to do skin to skin to initiate breastfeeding after delivery is when people have on bras that have to go over their heads. So nursing bras that are more like a sports bra type. So my favorite nursing bras are these and I get them at Target. The brand is Auden, A-U-D-E-N. Um, they are lightly lined seamless nursing bras. So. They are so nice because they unclasp in the back. And that is going to be great for if we're trying to get your bra off um, after you delivered or with the epidural, instead of having to get it over your head and then your IV is all tangled, one that just un unclips from the And when you're in labor or if you've just had the baby, it's just really nice to not have to fuss with so much getting things off over your head. And the reason why I also like these is because they are lined, so your nipple is not going to be like showing up for everybody to see, but the lining does not come out. It's sewn in. I hate linings that come out because then you wash it or when you snap down, it gets all tangled up in there. So these are my absolute favorite nursing bras and they make camis too. I'm wearing one of the camis right now. So I love those. That's a really nice thing to have packed and to be wearing if you want to be wearing a nursing bra. Going along with clothing for you, it's really nice to pack either a lightweight robe or a nice long cardigan. And that way, um, one, you have something to help keep you warm over top of either your hospital gown or your clothing that you're wearing. And you also have something to kind of serve as a cover um, for breastfeeding if you have a lot of visitors. Not that your visitors should care if you're breastfeeding, but you know, some people do. And if you wanna be modest, it's nice to have a little cardigan or a light robe. To go along with that, I am a big fan of nursing camis. I have a few in here. This one's from H&M. I have another one that is from Target that's also that, that Alden brand. This one does not have any lining in it. So just something that you can wear. You are perfectly fine to continue to wear a um, hospital gown after delivery, but the tank tops can be nice. Um, especially because when you're wearing the tank top, then you can also be wearing like a pair of light pajama pants or just something that's not super tight on your stomach. We don't know going in if we're going to have a vaginal birth or a C-section. So something nice and loose and comfortable on your stomach, then uh, it's really easy for the nurse to check your fundus without having to like totally pull everything up and 
have your entire bottom exposed which is totally fine if you're wearing a gown or a dress but just when you have visitors a lot of times it's easy to just do a quick little fundal rub, take a peek at the bleeding, and go from there for those fundal checks if you're wearing um, a t-shirt or a nursing tank and pants. And then with the nursing tanks, it's nice too. You can unsnap down the whole thing and just do skin to skin. So basically, easy access for mom and baby is definitely our goal there. Going off of that, going home outfit, something like that is totally fine, but I'm also a big fan of just a nice, loose dress. This is from Old Navy. It's just a maxi maternity dress. And so it's nice because it would work for winter and for summer. Um, just throw that cardigan on over top of this and you have a nice going home outfit. Speaking of going home and just being in the hospital in general, it's really nice to have a pair of plastic flip floppy shoes. So these are um, Birkenstocks. They're nice. I like them because I wear them in my everyday life. Dress them up, dress them down, but they're plastic. You can wear them in the shower. You can wear them walking in the halls. Just because you are having a baby and you are not sick does not mean that there are not germs in the hospital. So walking around barefoot is one of my personal um, things that just kind of grosses me out that sometimes patients and, and family members do. And I think they're just not thinking because they're not sick, right? But hospitals have germs and wearing shoes is really nice. Um, and then having plastic flip-flops that you can wear in the shower is good, but also flip-flops, something that's open kind of foot, open toe, because your feet might get really swollen in labor. You might have gotten a lot of fluid. You might have some issues with swelling in your ankles. So I think a lot of people in the summer think, oh yeah, totally, I'll bring sandals. But in the winter, it's nice to just have a pair too, uh, because you're just gonna be walking to your car after you've had the baby to get home, and you wanna make sure that you have something that actually fit. So that's all that I have for mom clothing. As you can see, pretty minimal um but you don't need a lot because really you don't need anything but something to wear home if we're going totally minimal because you can wear the hospital gown in the hospital um but i like to have the option to not wear the hospital gown because you just feel a little bit more normal when you're wearing your own clothes even if they are just pajamas so something else that i think is important to bring is some toiletries. So in here, I have makeup because I am a makeup wearer and I like to look nice in pictures and not haggard. And I think sometimes people are like, oh, don't pack any makeup, you won't wear it. But you very well might. And sometimes part of feeling normal and back to yourself is putting on a little bit of makeup. So, you know, don't bring like your entire vanity, but some mascara, a little foundation and lip gloss and blush, I think it's perfectly appropriate. And then something else that I really wanna make sure that people know to bring is shampoo and conditioner. So we have toiletries at our hospital and maybe some hospitals have some nicer toiletries, but we have a shampoo body wash combo and no conditioner. So if you wanna like feel nice and just feel like yourself again after having a baby, it's nice to just have some of your own toiletries. Toothbrush and toothpaste I have in here too. Um, you really probably can get away with not bringing any toiletries and just using the hospital ones. That's your prerogative, but I think part of feeling comfortable um, and just feeling like yourself again after you have a baby. And I've said that a lot, but it really, that is really kind of the goal because you've nine months you've carried this baby and now you've got this deflated stomach and probably a sore bottom or, or a sore abdomen from a C-section. And so just feeling like yourself again is so nice in the hospital to have your own clothes, to have a little bit of makeup if that's what you do. Um, and then your own shampoo and conditioner so you can just feel fresh and clean. Um, also, I have a hairbrush in here because I have to brush my hair. And in the hospital, all they have are like combs. So my own hairbrush is nice to have. So something else that you are gonna wanna have is a going home outfit for baby. So I actually have one right here for a little baby girl because when I got pregnant with Holden, I was convinced he was a girl. Isn't this so cute? It's really nice to have a going home outfit that is has easy access to the foot and to the belly button. So this is just another little one. So why that is is because babies in the hospital, they are gonna be banded and sometimes they're, those are on the ankles or those are on the wrists or those are on the umbilical stump, but uh, the bands and then a security tag is gonna correspond with um, mom and her partner's band. And so it's important to be able to have easy access for that in the hospital. 
you don't really need to dress your baby in the hospital and you certainly don't need to put on like five layers of clothing on them. Babies are going to need to be swaddled, which will, those blankets will be provided for the hospital. They need, um, maybe a t-shirt or a hat, both of which will be provided by the hospital, at least in the United States from um, where I have worked at least. And with those being provided, they're really easy on and off for doing skin to skin. Having baby skin to skin the majority of the time is probably where they're going to be hanging. You are gonna need something to take them home in. Um, and again, easy access to get off that security band and to get off the security sensor right before you go home and that they're appropriately strapped into the car seat. And bring um, a pair of a newborn outfit and a zero to three month outfit just in case you have a crazy chunky baby. Um, but preemie outfit I wouldn't necessarily recommend unless they're thinking that your baby is smaller or if you're early. But I wouldn't recommend going out and, and buying those just because the newborn outfits, even if they're a little bit, can typically work. And then my millennialness is going to be coming out right here. But if you want to bring like a special swaddle or like a letter board, something for you to take pictures with in the hospital, I think that's totally fine. I mean, don't bring like a whole set, but those fresh 48 hour pictures are so sweet. And honestly, your iPhone and some cute little, um, like a letter board and swaddle blanket. And I'll throw up here what I did with Holden, um, is really all you need for that. Just a disclaimer on this video, um, just because I'm telling you things that your hospital probably has does not mean that they necessarily do. You definitely want to follow up with your hospital and make sure that they have these items. Hi guys, so Holden's up from his nap. He wanted to come and say, say hello. Can you say hi? So he's getting so big. So he went from the seventh percentile to the 63rd percentile. In three months, he gained over five pounds. My boy likes to eat. Who? Oh, don't you? Anyway, so thank you guys so much for watching. Definitely comment down below if you have anything that you think we should add to our list of what to pack to, for the hospital. I'm probably going to make a video about what not to pack for the hospital. And again, all of these are just recommendations and suggestions. You do you. Bertha.